King James, King James Bible. Um, I want to give my testimony um, about this uh, controversial title to the preserved scripture, the Holy Word, and why I hold and have a testimony of the faithfulness of the King James Bible and how I'm not a King James only ist but I trust in the King James Bible. King James onlyism is a, I believe, planted by the enemy to cause camps and to attack people who hold to the King James and have a testimony of its faithfulness and its inerrantness because of the faithful preservation of the text from the original writings of the early church. And uh, I'd like to give my perspective for anyone in the same boat who finds, them, finds themselves where I found myself. So I'd like to start with saying that I once wasn't a Bible believer. I wasn't in any camp. I wasn't put into any camp. I didn't choose to be a title or I didn't choose to go after a group to follow. I came to my knees to the author of this this book. That was the Lord. That was God. That was Jesus Christ. And God the Father. By God the Holy Spirit. And seeking his will. Now I, I gained a faithful witness of him from somebody who shared their testimony of him and his word. So I heard his word and uh, I received his word and I called upon him, not his book, not his, not his Bible, his word in his Bible. And I received a witness that God, that Jesus Christ is God and he came in the flesh and he, he died to save all men and he forgave me of my sins and he uh, gave me a new heart in my sinfulness to help me have the victory over that sinful nature that, uh, within me. And so I wasn't even a Bible believer then I didn't have a Bible I only knew that he was faithful so then I went to look for a Bible <laughs> and thankfully the version I had in my family was a King James now the King James Bible is not copyright protected so many publishers can publish the same faithful text so it's like open source software if you think of commercial software like Windows it's closed you can't see how it works and you can liken that to all the private Bibles that have come out since because there was a time in history where the only Bible the only faithful translation of the original text was preserved within the King James Bible there was other Bibles preceding that that were, f that were from the text and there was corrupt texts that were had errors in and there was a faithful set of texts and that's an area that needs to be researched for anyone looking into the testimony of King James and the King James translation and how that was done and I'll give a brief synopsis of some points that I, that I examined and I um, found light and truth and edification and that strengthened the testimony I'd already see from heaven and uh, in history um, the King James had been a, a faithful book and it wasn't copyrighted so when it was given to the public, and if you read with inside the King James Bible, the main purpose of this book coming forth to the English-speaking people 
and this is very uh, key to Great Britain's history and it's one of the most important points of our historic her heritage that's been lost it's the um, the coming forth of this book because before that time England was fighting for its independence because of the dominance of Roman Catholicism now Roman Catholicism was the hijacker of Christianity to um, control government, kings, commerce and all avenues of life through their machinations and secret uh, practices and it was known throughout history they, of the Inquisition how anyone that was faithful to the word was an enemy to the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church paraded as the face of Christianity and persecuted the true Christians under the ignorance of the, the lost general public of the world those who didn't believe and di didn't know and hadn't received the word because the point was that the Catholics wanted to keep the world in darkness so they could be the priests they could be the advocate to God and they could dictate what the scriptures said and hold it all to themselves so many people lost their lives to get this the faithful text from the original apostles and the original writings into the public's hands and that was that was um, accomplished now that's a miracle because these texts have been faithfully and fearfully kept from the enemy throughout history to be preserved and people died, people were burnt at the stake, people were tortured, hung, hung drawn, brutally mutilated and punished as heretics by the Roman Catholic dominance and this is what it states in the King James Bible and so if you can co compare closed source software like Windows, you, you don't know what it's doing you're just told it operates faithfully don't worry about it, it patches itself you can't read it and even if you couldn't read computer programming there'd be computer programmers that could read it and say hang on public there's something untoward with this computer program and because it would be open source meaning that anybody could examine it and how it's working and what it's doing on your operating system on your PC so you can, uh, the public body can have a voice and say hang on a minute something's wrong here this needs changing and they could ch be authorized to change it but with the scriptures they're, they're fixed they're permanent they're written they're complete but they're an open source it's an open source the copyright is open source anybody can with the money could print a copy of the from the King James Bible and uh, distribute the King James Bible and not and not be able to change any of the writing because it's copyright preserved, it's protected by law, by the King so it's like um, open source software and closed source software all the closed source Bibles are the modern Bibles because there was a time in history where we didn't have didn't need to have any other Bible because the most faithful people of history translated the collection of faithful texts and they lawfully translated those texts under the eyes of the public, under the scrutiny of the world and they thrashed it out and come to a lawful, agreed, faithful translation of those original texts that have been preserved through history and there was many many collections because there wasn't printers so they had to be co copied and penned so they were penned time and time and time and time again so how, however many thousands of copies of one of one book or that survived and they were all correlated and and, and all that that agreed with the other one so you had a faithful record of all the copies going back to the original 
to almost a hundred percent accuracy without any errors whereas all the other bibles have been had things removed and there's uh, contradictions because they're unfaithful texts so other people can copyright them and then other, other sponsored intellectuals can add to their software add to the program add to the teaching and say oh no it means this it means that and then they're in opposition to the faithful texts because they're making a profit people who distribute the King James Bible don't make a profit because it, 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 uh, King James appointed it to, to be given to the public to be read in all churches now you may uh, understand churches uh, as in those days as um, where Christians would fellowship and, and worship and meet and uh, Christian, the church is those who are called out of the world and they're not it's not the traditional church in a sense where you have a, a hierarchy of clergy like like um, the Church of England for example that was always a break away from Ro the dominance of Roman Catholicism it never fully broke away because church and state are separate church means called out called out of the world being saved and baptised by the Holy Spirit by Christ's death, burial and resurrection you've been brought into the kingdom of heaven and that the, the Godhead indwells the, believe, the faithful believer because they've appropriated Christ's atonement his finished work on the cross for paying the price of sin going into the grave, going into hell overcoming death and getting the victory because he's life and he gives that life to those who trust him in faith and call upon him for forgiveness and to um, for his holiness to escape sin to escape death and to escape hell and he gave that faithful record and preserved it in the in the text and the enemy is against that because it didn't want the world to know that so he wanted to keep it in darkness so we have the King James and it's copyright free and it's preserved and that's a very overlooked point that it's it, it, that speaks volumes in itself that and that's why the enemy's against it that's why you get King James onlyism oh you King James onlyism oh you know well I'm not a King James onlyism I just have a faithful testimony that it's a faithful book and um, that is to attack people's faith that's to t attack their testimony of the King James because I'm a person if you want to believe in a hold to a book with error I, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't advise it but if that's your choice that's your choice and um, my choice to be a King James believer is is through faith and sincerity and because I trust God I don't trust the King James and I don't tr I don't trust men but I, I investigated King James's motives, his fruit. I investigated how it was translated and what that involved and the opposition against it through history and who that enemy was. And that's what this bonfire night was for. And if you read in the King James Bible, this is why it states who the enemy is. It's the Catholic Church. That's why our, our Protestant kings and queens swear an oath against Popery, not to have, be any to inform the public and not be involved with its machinations and its associations which I'm, I'm afraid to say today is um, a lie you know the whole Church of England is in bed with the Catholic Church it just doesn't publicly announce that and it states otherwise that it holds to the, the, the King James Bible as does Protestants, but they don't, you know. So church, church and state have never been where it's never been the voice of Christianity. There may have been people of Christ's body, his church, who would go to those buildings that would be run by 
state representatives, clergy. And there may have been clergy who were following the traditions of men, but they were saved, they were members of the church. So you have to separate what a believer is from what the established traditions are. And, that, and, and that's where I found myself as a believer. And you, you're coming up the road and, you, and you're, you're gaining a testimony through your relationship in faith with God. And he leads your footsteps and you come across all these divisions and devices and pitfalls. And you realise that the enemy is planting seeds. He's putting up false Christian web pages. <coughs> and they mimic all what a Christian is. They they imit they copy people's testimonies and they go right. We're right that 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 and that, and then we change these two points of doctrine. Oh, one you can lose your salvation, or you got to call Jesus by this name, or Jesus didn't die on the cross, or you know like or there's so many different divisions and camps. And it will pull the belief, the faithful believer into the camp, into the division. And some of those traditions grow up within believers and, the, and they are converted by those traditions and hold to them. Um, if, if you look at the five-pointed star of Calvinism, that's almost like a load of men, you know, teenage men sharpening up a Chinese Death Star in the garage and saying, oh look, 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 these spikes dig in the tree when we throw it, let's throw that at other Christians and and uh, throw the, these doctrinal interpretations other than what the Bible says because the Bible is the, the preserved word, this is where it's so important, the preserved word, God has faithfully preserved his word. I'm going to read Psalms 12. Um, now the Lord has written all through the scriptures where there's two faithful witnesses every word shall be established and there's many script, many psalms many um, testimonies of the prophets that the word is faithful and God will preserve it but I want to read Psalm 12 because it shows I'm going to show the contrast of the day that the uh, century, the 1600s, when the, the King James was actually first publicly uh, presented and published and presented to the public body to be read in, in churches amongst the Christian gathering freely. So every believer could have a copy of the, the authoritative word and check what those priests were s singing in, in their in their pulpits so if they had a genuine faithful church member they had the authority to challenge him and if he was um, edifying and full of charity and full of the word they would be increased and they can they could examine it and learn what they were being taught by the preacher by the teacher by the by the person giving the sermon and they would be edified and they, they would learn themselves because they would have a record and they could go home and further study on the areas where they were learning but the Catholic Church had that the truth behind their back and they taught intellectually what the scriptures mean they didn't know the word they hadn't received the word therefore they um, hold the word illegally without authority claiming authority to be the sole keepers of that word and it kept the whole um, generations in darkness and subjection to this uh, cap captivity of this uh, dominant force and throughout history that's what England's been fighting with that's what traditional Christianity's been trying to break away from but it's been seduced by this power, by their machinations. And if you look at the contrast between people of our generation, how evil was grown up, and people of that generation, how Christianity had grown up 
in pe people's lives and how that had, even though that most of the most of the traditional church perhaps didn't have real true genuine spirit filled believers in it the public were going to church they were because it was in, incorporated into um, public life into uh, public services into the calendar of the seasonal uh, yearly annually uh, functioning of the British public and the uh, civil services and the all had were founded on Christian traditions and principalities even though they you couldn't say they're all genuinely Christian but they were following Christian ways and, and uh, you know keeping the law keep it you know trying to keep the law and we had um, back in the 1600s you had some um, pure hearted intellectual scholars who had um, I'm not saying there wasn't evil and cun cunning didn't exist but predominantly the the scholars were um, people were more noble people were more openly and sincere and honest generally and um, they had the most untainted uh, correlation and um, consistency of languages they were pure in their knowledge of ancient languages and they were God-fearing and their motives were solely for the truth uh, as, as um, honest uh, detectives and uh, forensic teams would approach a brutal murder of an innocent or something they would would not want to make mistakes in um, incriminating any crime scene or spoiling their chances of uh, resolving and bringing to light what really happened and the truth and, and these um, scholars were faithful and they were legally um, up against different denominational beliefs so it, it had to be um, it, you couldn't get any false witness under the table of the good conscientious so if there were any um, malignant um, intentions on the table in the translation all the honest people would counter it and it would show up <coughs> so it would have been combed through until everyone would have been like locked in a room to everything come out agreed and they would go through every chapter and, and through all that um, work carefully word by word chapter by chapter book by book until they all agreed that it was faithfully correct and the language translations were were correct in their context these people were uh, full of the Holy Spirit they must have been to understand how to translate what the word meant so they done it fearfully so if there was people who didn't believe you would have a mixture of the dominant witnesses being of from believers who would establish and know how to translate the text faithfully in the context of what it meant so there must have had been some divine help some spiritual guidance in that um, that gift to be able to translate the text faithfully but the public doesn't believe in in God doesn't is not going to believe in the supernatural uh, hand of God preserving his word by the power of the Holy Spirit through the weakness of men but these men these weak men in uh, 1600s were po possibly knew at least 10 to 15 different languages and they could translate um, 
Arab, you know, Hebrew and Greek and Latin and all the languages. So they, they had a vast knowledge base. Unlike today, that that knowledge has been uh, corrupted by the world. It's been watered down. It's been chopped up. There, had, there, there may be a record of that knowledge, but there wasn't what was in those men's hearts to continue to continue through the generations so that there's been a loss of belief we're in an unbelieving generation today and the unbelieving generations are the people who translate the bible whereas in that generation the bible was predominantly translated by people who had a testimony of god first over otherwise they wouldn't have believed a book they believed in the author of the book and had a testimony of the author of the book and desired to have a faithful translation of that book and that and that can only come from a right heart and a right mind that came from god all good things and all good motives come from god and the king james was a good motive it still today cannot be moved out of our law it would have to be unlawfully moved out of the law because it's preserved by the king, by law, by a faithful witness and lawful presentation and translation of that lawful book. And that law, that is a heavenly law, living out through physical laws and principles given to men, God-fearing men. Let me read uh, Psalm 12. So you would get, if you're a King James Bible believer, you're going to get targeted at our King James only. And then you're going, if you're unsure within your testimony, you're going to go, oh, wh who do I follow? Which brother? Which, which tradition do I follow? Well, you've got to follow the Lord's will, not what, not what other men. Not, I trusted God, and I, and I looked at the evidence I examined, and I prayerfully studied. And thankfully, I had a King James when I first was saved, and uh, I stuck with it. And then I tried other, I did try um, and had a look at other translations. But I, I soon discovered the whole controversy, the whole what was behind it, all the different camps, all the divisions. It's just. Uh, spread out a big net, broad net, like a fishing net to catch anyone and put people off the truth. It's the enemy. And it's like all these false Christian websites and these pastors and these uh, plants and spies who come out amongst the Christian and they, and they copy who the true Christians are and they mimic them. And they say they even use the Godhead and they believe in Jesus and they, they, they tick all the right boxes and then two or three thing, two or three points are divisive to lead the believer away, lead the believer off the, the way of what the word reveals. And it's up to the believer because it's a you know everybody's got a, f um, a free choice and an agency and then they need to trust the Lord and work through these things. And, that, and one of the things you come up, this is what you will come up against, the King James onlyism. Um, and, and you don't hear people in King James going, oh, attacking other people's work. Because the, a believer's um, faith in God is the most important thing, their trust in God and his word. So a faithful believer is only going to share what he's faithfully experienced. But amongst all that voice, so other people can recognise when they've faithfully been led by the Holy Spirit, that they, they too have faithfully have another witness from other believers that, of the same witness that they've received from them, themselves from the Lord. And this is, goes hand in hand with trust in the Lord trust in his word and if you haven't got if you haven't got a testimony of a faithful record of the word and i don't i i believe that the 
the word of God is preserved in the text, in the faithful, wherever they are, if they still remain. But, you know, that they, those paper deteriorates. And any, um, the Old Testament, I know that there's copies of um, the book of Ezekiel on a bronze, on bronze plate somewhere that was found. And that was authenticated and word for word as it is in the King James. So uh, these scholars were faithful and they um, translated a faithful record, the Old Testament and the New. And you get into this argot of the Greek and the text, well, the best scholars in the world of that day, the most qualified people, have already put it into one to English-speaking people. So it makes it easier to find the preserved original text in one book and since then you've got all this whole array you've got a light bulb and you've got all this light shade of all these um, false oh not that not not the King James but this one oh not that one but this one not uh, all the way out on the left and then the same all the way out on the right oh not that the, the new version and the new double duper duper version and then, oh no, now we it's getting better and better. There, See, they're, the man's ideal thinks, oh, we're getting much more better at translating it. What they're doing is they're corrupting it and confusing what is already established and works. And it's whole, it's preserved, and it's true, and it's faithful. And uh, that's the reason why... Another reason why it's strengthened my testimony in the King James. But I want to read the Lord's will, in, uh, which is another lawful witness of the lawful preserved witness by man and the lawful preserved witness by God and man and God in man because they agree with one another. Uh, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Now comparing this time to um, that time. Now there's always times in history where the uh, societies ebb and flow, kingdoms come and go, rise and fall. So we're looking, we know that there's a pattern in nature where men's hearts fail when Kingdoms become corrupted, the public get downtrodden and apathetic and then there's rebellion and and then the uh, wicked government tighten up their belt and then, you know, it gets more oppressive and so forth and then there's a breakout and a war and all sorts of things go up and up, go on and it collapses. So there's always a time where the faithful fail from among the children of men. Now, when you compare today's generation who are post-Christian, they're not believers, they're wicked. Wicked simply means unbeliever, doesn't believe the truth, doesn't believe the truth in God, doesn't believe the Creator, doesn't believe the evidence, won't believe the evidence, and won't receive a faithful witness for themselves and believe in Jesus Christ. That's this generation. So, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. You know, help me, God. There's no one I can trust around on the earth. They're all liars. Fa uh, faithful fail from among the children of men. So, compared to the generation of King James, they, these were God-fearing people. There was a God-fearing public. There were God-fearing members of society. Of course there were criminals. Of course there was people who didn't believe and of course there was falseness amongst that but there was a time in the British uh, history a golden time where there were God-fearing people who were they may have not been perfect but they had a heart a pure heart they believed in God they were still sinners but they believed in God and they'd received a faithful witness therefore they were faithful because they believed they had faith and they were called faithful, not because they were perfect and holy and righteous, but they were faithful. That every they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbour. So everyone today is 
they're they're living their own lives, and if they're not a believer and founded in the true principles of life, their life is vain. So any any conversation they have that is not not in the right vein is vanity. So every every one with his neighbour, they speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbour, with flattering lips and with a double heart. Double heart means two face. You know that 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 they say, "Oh hi, how are you doing?" And then then the next day they're like, "Oh, you know, I can't stand that." You know, why do I, you know, I can't be bothered with that person. And then they show their, their other uh, politeness and how they've been, you know, put on their good face. You know, we're all the same. We're all sinners. We've all got that uh, fallen, double-hearted nature. And that's because of unbelief. Because if you're, if you're not grounded and certain and, and, and you've got a single witness... You're going to be double. You're going to be. Oh, is it? You're going to be in your nature and your sin nature, going up and down on the, on the seesaw, round and round in the roundabout, and back and forth on the swings. And that is on double-hearted nature because that is unbelief. Because the faithful fail from among the children of men. So unless you're grounded and faithful and have that power and grace over your sin nature, you're a vain-hearted, double-talking person speaking flattery. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? Basically, with our own ideas, with our own lip service and our own, and nobody sees us, who Who's the police force for us? We're the top, you know, what we say goes. Who's Lord over us? We can get away with what we like. For the oppression of the poor, and that's the consequences. For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, now will I rise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. So the Lord is will take consideration on those that are suffering by the wickedness of man's choices because they choose don't not to believe therefore they don't believe in anything and they can believe therefore they believe in lies oh well, we can get away with murder we can get away with trampling on people because people can't see what we're up to it's a big scam <coughs> <coughs> then they get other people compromised to live out that scam and use those people as a fire shield and scapegoats the words of the Lord are pure words, a silver tried in the furnace of earth, so a purified seven times. So the Lord's saying like his, his words are you know, doubly sure, they are more refined and pure and holy. And they're from him, they are pure words, a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. So they will live out, they will survive. Uh, going through that uh, purification process. They will, the Lord has preserved them through the, the fearful sinfulness of man who has received his word and has preserved it against the adversity and opposition to that word from the beginning. So this, these collected records of scripture from the original uh, pens of the apostles and the scribes that wrote the testimony of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and the fulfilling of the the Jewish uh, covenant and the old the old testament prophets was completed and this record was preserved faithfully and the Lord has testified that before he would do it that he would do it he will do it and he has done it and you can receive a sure uh, record. And, and he says, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, which, is, which he has. And if you're faithful and trust in the Lord, he will show you which of his words faithful and preserved. And which of those are, are not. 
who use part of the faithful text and then they add corruptions to it. Oh, we change this area, we'll leave that area in. But uh, the King, the King Jack, or, or it get into intellectual, or you need the, um, you know, the Greek and the uh, other. Well, it's all been done for you, and it's not wrong to, to look at other translations and to measure and compare. But you need a testimony of that the one, the, the faithful word that has been preserved. And once you've got that, you can test all other with it as a standard measure, as a... Um, a standard weight you can test the weight of everything else because God's faithful and you can trust God over man's opinion over intellectual opinion and the Holy Spirit will teach a believer his word what's his word who's speaking his word and who isn't and what isn't his word and where there's error or confusion or the Holy Spirit will uh, prompt and via your discernment what is what but that but um, by study by studying things out you, you can receive a sharper focus and a, a build upon the witness you've sought out to receive uh, so if you compare from the psalm, the vilest men are exalted. Now, con considering today's times, what our world is today, I, I basically Sodom and Gomorrah, I idol worship, and you know, just leading the world off in that direction, and all the young generations. Whereas in the generations of uh, from King James's time, we've had a consistent history of our who the enemy is, the Catholic Church, and the king wrote about it to, you know, to keep all popery out of the land and to keep people out of the ignorance that they want to keep people on, and it's the same people today, they keep the truth behind their back from the public. They don't, they, the enemy knows that they're the enemy, and they know who the true Christians are, warning the public of the enemy. So they will use Christianity and tradition and they will want to create as many divisions, lead many people astray and, and keep people in ignorance away from the truth. And that is one of the strongest uh, testimonies, uh, um, points of my testimony of the King James. Not only is it the first guy was I called and trusted God and followed his um, followed his word, trusted his spirit, called upon his name, received a witness that, that he exists, and then trusted him because he's faithful. Because I applied my faith in his word, so I I I knew for myself he was faithful and the author of that word, and he led me in that word, and he led me to the King James. And he, he, this is a uh, given to me. I, I in my, when I was a young Christian, I uh, got deceived after I was saved because I didn't know the word. I didn't have a copy of the word. I had a, an old Bible at home, but I didn't really, didn't really read it. And as I was studying, it was I was studying it from a blank sheet. I really knew very little about Christianity other what my headmaster had preached at school. I remember the death, burial and resurrection. I knew the basics, but they were very um, distant from my memory and, and, you know, not quite sure on all things. So I studied as much as I could from the big, from scratch. And of course it was a, a mammoth task. And then um, that's how I got deceived into joining the Mormon Church, which they they use a King James Bible. Now the text is faithful, but they've added their own um, chapter headings. They've put their own kind of suggestions of translation in their topical guide and dictionary. 
but the text is faithful and that was one of my this is how the Lord uh, you, you know my study of the word brought me out of that system because uh, even the Mormon church now Joseph Smith was deceived and uh, a liar and uh, it's like all these liars they use the truth to hold it up as a a light on their stick and it's a masonic system of setup and hierarchy and they will use other people's testimonies and talks that have been publicly given and they will weave their own doctrine onto it and read it it comes up on an autocue to their leaders they're complete wolves in sheep's clothing and they deceive uh, millions of people by their by their craft and by using the truth. Now, a bit about the Mormon history. Now, Joseph Smith claims he's a prophet and he saw God the Father and Jesus appear to him and told him that all the other churches were fake, which is, there's some truth in that. Because uh, it's from the, from the scriptures, there's two book churches, the believers and the devil. So the enemy knows that. Although the enemy doesn't believe in Jesus, it might know the Satan, but it might not know Jesus. So therefore it's deceived, it doesn't know the, the truth first, to know which one's the deceiver. So if you trust the deceiver first, he's not going to teach you who the truth is. If you trust the truth first, you'll know the deceiver. So Joseph Smith come up with his own translation of what the Bible meant. But then there's a split in the church. A, probably a purposeful split and the real scripture went one way Joseph Smith's and the church claiming to be the ones who own those scriptures lost the copyright so they only they got the they had to use the preserved King James of their day which was faithful and they lost the uh, right to teach what Joseph Smith changed from it from his heart so he, he, even that uh, hypocrisy in the Mormon church is overlooked, that they haven't got their own scripture. It's in a separate, ch a breakaway church that they don't have, a, claim they don't have anything to do with. But I think from the behind the scenes that it was deliberately split up that way so they can practice other activities un under the belief of one that they couldn't do in the public face of the other one. So it, it was a device with, um, you know, some tell, telling their public members it was because of uh, a disagreement and who had the right to be the prophet, who God had chosen to be the prophet. None of them, of course, because the prophets are ended in, by, you know, by the the prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if if you've come across, if you've come in, into the way and you're coming across which Bible, which camp, and there's many little things like um, another thing that I come across before I was put into that camp, you know. Uh, well, I, I followed the Lord, and then you find yourself in a camp. So, whatever camp you find yourself in, and it's. Uh, you know the toxic shame and you're following you're looking for the truth you you will find it if you trust in the lord and, and and the scriptures and the word and he will lead you and uh another one of those for uh seeds planted out there is the name of jesus oh he's uh yeshua and you got well what i what i always consider is and, con and considering the English translation of the Greek and the Hebrew text that we've been given the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we've and the faithful have called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now after that if they translate Jesus into Joshua or Yeshua or however the translation is back into the Lord's name but that's not the Lord's name really the Lord's only the Lord knows his name but the name given 
was Jesus Christ. So that's the name I called upon that saved me. Now here's my point. People coming up the road who don't know Josh Yeshua and that his, you know, that's the correct translation, so called. They could put their faith in that, and then you could have another camp of people that the people teaching that are unaware of that are teaching another Yeshua. And they say, Oh, you you've got to call upon Yeshua the Messiah. Because Jesus said there's many Jesuses, there's many Gospels. You know, there's only one Gospel and there's only one Jesus Christ, and it's his Gospel. And so that, that person could put their faith in Yeshua, the Messiah, and then they can come across another camp teaching that Yeshua, the Messiah, is actually Lucifer, or, or some other, you know, he's not Jesus Christ, he's not the, the Son of God who came in the flesh and uh, died for the sins of all mankind and rose again, who we have a faithful record of, a testimony of in our hearts and through the word of God. So that's one thing I consider and that's why I hold to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I teach the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Although um, if, if a believer after they've been saved decides to call and they, and they, and they live in um, a predominantly uh, a country where the language is uh, Hebrew well, of course they're going to be teaching Yeshua the Messiah. But if, it, if that's taught in an English-speaking country, you're given another name other than the name given that's been used for centuries and it, it's, it, it's proved faithful. Why now would you change it? Because why wasn't it called? Why wasn't it translated that? Because oh, you're going to say oh, it's because the Christian Church were corrupt. No, the early Christian Church were Jews, and and Paul was a Roman, and they had they had the Old Testament in Greek. They had trans the the word the Old Testament w was translated in Greek even in that day. So they had the original. Uh, language and they would have had in a Greek people would could have got Greek copies of it if they had the money and Paul was a Roman he would have known Greek he would have known uh, different languages so uh, the, you know people were scholarly and they they learned different languages Ju Jerusalem was a uh, you know a metropolitan place it was had Babylonian culture, had Asian culture, had Roman culture, pagan culture. And and the Jews had grown up amongst that and around that. So they would have had they you know, they're wise people, they would learn, teach their children to have an advantage. They would have been schooled, they would have had different you know, it depends where you what your background was, but you would have if you're a well-to-do, privileged family and educated, you would have been taught all the different languages. So um, the name given was the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who call up Romans 10, those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Because he's faithful and that's the name given. That's the name the Holy Spirit used to translate the uh, text. So that's another pitfall and area you may come across. Uh, you know that you should and then you should use the um, or you should learn all the language well, that's wonderful and fine if you want to do that but you shouldn't teach that to somebody who's got a blank sheet and doesn't know anything because it can go two ways they could either be brought onto salvation following the name of Yeshua and it brings them onto the name that they recognize who was Jesus who was the Messiah who was the son of God sent, that's fine. But if it doesn't and they trust in some other Jesus, some other Yeshua, because, you know, there, there's other Yeshuas, there's other Jesuses, there's only one Jesus Christ, the word of the son of God, on the right hand of God. So that's another area that you may come across. But if you go by those principles, you trust God over man.
over your own intellect, over what your pastor says, over what the traditional voice is. And you trust the word and you trust to get a testimony of a faithful translation. And you get a testimony that the King James is that faithful translation. Then you can trust in it because you can trust God. Then you can measure. Then your discernment will be sharpened. Then you'll be how to learn. You'll be able to apply that measure to who's teaching the word of God. Who's teaching a faithful report of the preserved word and who isn't and therefore where are all these these op where's all this opposition what do they look like what's their motive what do their web pages look like what's the ingredients within a real true believers web page and what's the imitation that's made to look like a believer that and and the more you learn and the more you study with your faithful witness and your trust in God you know, read Proverbs, trust in God and have the word of God written on the table of your heart. Study his word and the Lord will lead you by his word. His word is his heart, his spirit. And that's why he's preserved it and that's why King James. Now if you look at King James, his heart, you can, you can, you'll always get the enemy saying this about King James, that about King James. Now some of the contro controversy may very well be true. you got to remember King James's bloodline, his background, the world he was growing up in. But you have to look at the man's fruit. You have to look at what he, the legacy he left. Now he left a wonderful legacy in the King James. I read a, a di um now how authentic it is, I couldn't uh, lawfully tell you, but I read some claim to be authenticated journal entries of the before his death and to his children and he's right in his heart and concerns for his children and I saw within that uh, testimony uh, a faithful God-fearing Christian because he was putting other people above himself not only his children but the British public a king actually put in the British public first over his own interest, over his own kingdom. He was living his kingdom for the public. Or he was turned to do that. The God converted his heart towards that motive. He died for his testimony because of the enemy. Because as soon as he'd done that, the Catholic Church would have been, you know, back with a vengeance like it has through history as soon as the King James come out they were you know they're, they're there like a froth round uh, you know scum round a boiling pot around the lip they're ready there to you know get it all over the over, over people and over the truth and they're like like hawks vultures around a carcass ready to peck it to pieces with their machinations because they're against the truth they're against the truth coming out because it exposes them as criminals murderers and they want to continue on in their perversion and uh, that's why I defend the King James that's why I'm a that's why I've been labeled a King James only is and uh, I'd, I'd invite anyone to do a thorough history of the Catholic uh, machinations through the Inquisition, all there, all where they've been caught and reported by uh, prominent people, ambassadors of nations, they've caught the Catholic Church playing there, assassinating people, assassinating their opposition. You know, working behind the scenes like modern, free modern day, like they do free modern day Freemasonry, education, publishing books against the truth rewriting history books, rewriting, uh, you know, buying up through their power, through their expense and working through these second, third hand bodies to print and produce counter Bibles to come up with um, controversial books that they can get published overnight whereas somebody on the ground trying to get the truth and warn the public is going to get stamped on. So we've got this Catholic dominance, this popery dominance, which King James warned about. That's why I'm for the King James, because it's such a, 
you know, it's such a convicting book of this wickedness and it and it holds its own. Because that who the author of that book holds his own, he's faithful. And and my testimony is that the Lord has preserved his infallible faithful word through that through that man and given it to the world through in the English language. And and I believe God's put his finger on on the King James Bible. I said that's a tr that's a faithful standard translation. That do doesn't deny that his faithful word is in other translations from the same text. It just means it's all in one public uh, pr um, faithful copy. You could have another, you know, another king bring out exactly an identical book and call it, you know, another by the name of a different king, but it would be the same Bible. It would have the same word of God preserved within that Bible. These other Bibles, if you examine them, they are they, um, one word can change the context and the meaning, and it causes division and confusion, and it causes fracturing and and compartmentalizes believers. That's the enemy, because we're all one heart and one mind in Christ. We've all received that spiritually, therefore we should all be in agreement to that word. But we're not because the enemy is so good at planting lies and tears and pulling people away. And it takes ground. So that's why the Lord says some are going to be, when they when they come before the Lord, they're going to realise how they were out of the way. They were holding to a false principle and they were deceived. They were straightened in themselves rather in the uh, straightened in the word or straightened by the word because they haven't followed those principles they haven't had a testimony of God from God and been led step by step by God in his word to a faithful word and then from there within that faithful word to measure all other things and to continue to be able to measure all things and be refreshed by his word on a daily basis but if you haven't got that testimony how can you trust in God if you can't trust his word how can you trust in God if you can't trust that God didn't preserve his word who are you and what are you trusting in your own intellect or you're confused or you're tossed or you don't know what you know you you've not put your trust in the Lord so that's why I'm sharing this testimony for anyone and why I defend the King James Bible, why I hold to the King James Bible, why it holds me, uh, it holds me up. I, I've been placed on the rock and uh, the author of the King James is that rock. So I'm going to leave that there and invite anyone to examine the... Uh, now there's some wonderful videos online that somebody's done a lot of hist um, history revision and released a the history of the King James Bible. So I, I would invite you to look at, a, um, I will put a link on this video of what that video is. I think it's by an Irishman, uh, Patrick Connor, I think. And he does the history of the translation. It's not the BBC or the commercial mainstream documentary it's a, a personal home movie presentation on the scenes of of the history it is a beautifully simple documentary that clearly shows what men went through to bring about that briefly it only scratches the surface but it give it would give you an idea to what our what the current was what the temperature was and what the circumstances were of our nation and what was going on in that day in the hearts and minds of powers in the hearts and minds of men and the public body and the and also the, those who understood in the public body and they those more vulnerable and downtrodden who are ignorant and you you will see through history how the truth like all truth comes across that the the claws of the opposition and it pops out of the woodwork people go missing people mysteriously die you know and it all follow it's like a a lit fuse going to a bomb you know on one of those old 
films that, he, that to, just to um, inject some uh, suspense. Oh no! If they don't put that fuse out, the whole the whole place is going to blow up. And that's like the truth. You got this fire lit chasing after it, and you can see that through uh, history of the preservation of God's word and how the Catholic Church murdered and burnt people at the stake and persecuted and that got to the king's ear, you know, that pricked his heart and I'm sure that motivated him to get moving and getting, getting that translation to the public people because it was, the enemy were around it pulling out all the stops to stop this book from getting to the English people because it preserves their law and their rights, their God-given rights and their the rights of their nation. And if they don't know that, they're not going to know whether their nation's in line or not. And they're not going to be able to speak out against it. So they're going to be powerless and unfounded. So that's one of the most important things of a, the lawful book is your salvation. To know Jesus Christ, to be established on a lawful rock. Therefore you can live a lawful life, even if the law's corrupt then it has no power over you. It has to, as long as you're lawful, it can't do nothing. And if it arrests you, you can turn, overturn the whole lot with your lawful witness. That they are liars, they are unfounded and they're not lawful. But if you don't know that and you've not received that, and, that, and that's the importance of the King James, because not only is it preserved in common law, it teaches the principles of what our common law is and how to, how to see how church and state are separate but how state is necessary to combat evil and that it's right, it has right principles in it and the law is for lawbreakers and uh, how people corrupt the law to have dominion over people rather than lawfully administer and jurisdict over them they lawfully dominate and they use their laws unjustly because the public ha aren't lawfully established in what our law sh how our law should operate they become prey and ignorant victims to the lawlessness and that's where we are in the day and that's the importance of the King James you need to be saved, you need to receive life you need to, re you need to be born again so if you're one of those born again believers coming up the road, up the way or you're in the way, on your journey and you've come across the King James, which Bibleism, you know, which Bible, and you know, that you're going to be labelled whatever choice you make, uh, either to make you feel part of something or to make you feel stupid for not being part of what the label status quo is. Uh, so I would invite you to examine the uh, my te consider what I said in my testimony and trust the Lord and his word and that's how I was led in his word because when you pray the Lord speaks to you by his word and the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit through the word and you're comforted, you're convicted or you're increased, you're edified because love is edifying, it, it, it resolves concerns, it teaches you what you can't see, it's patient and long-suffering it, it wants to meet all of your needs and if your needs struggling to find your way in which Bible, which, which doctrine, you don't need anyone but the Word and, and your trust and relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so that's my testimony of the faithful and thank God I have a testimony, not from other people, following what other people say. Because that's what you, you, you're prone to as a young Christian will follow after, you know, you, you're trying to find what the truth is and when you haven't quite established it yourself, you might be pinning your hopes and following somebody you think is right because you, there's things that you know that are right that they also agree that are right and you think, oh, well, they got this bit right they must have that bit right that I'm not sure on so you can lean on people and not realise that you're falsely trusting in what they're holding up as truth 
but uh, really catching you out with a, an error or a lie. And the Lord will teach all people through his word because it's all been preserved and revealed in the word and it was dealt by the apostle, uh, the apostle Paul. He dealt with all the, the corruption that entered in. He done what King James done, you know, he preserved the record which was preserved again because God's preserved it and God's faithful and you trust God first. He faithfully guide you in the world, in the word, but for through all doctrine, and then to measure who are heretics, who are in error. You know who who is lacking, who's who who who's abounding, who's 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 edifying, and who's not edifying. And that's and it will guide your heart how to measure, and who and how to examine, and he leads guide your footsteps as you grow. But the key is to trust God, to be led in his word and by his word, because the Holy Spirit on its own, a testimony of the Holy Spirit on its own, needs the word, the holy word. The Lord's put the word above his name because of this, the importance of it and the significance of it and what it contains. And the Holy Spirit needs the, the preserved faithful word to make sure you're not being deceived by the, the adverse spirit that will come alongside and interrupt the Holy Spirit because the enemy will use truth and the Holy Spirit will not deny truth but it will reveal error and uh, highlight truth but it won't deny evil men using truth but he will testify that that truth has been used unfoundedly and evilly but that takes discernment and that only comes through uh, trust in the Lord and studying and growing in the word and you need the faithful testimony of the word so I'm going to leave that there with you and I hope that's been a help to somebody I hope that's been a defence and guided somebody on, on the pitfalls and been a defence to the enemy you know there and to you know Go, there they are don't you know that's that's why there's all these divisions it's it, it's the enemy you know creeping around in the dark putting up these pitfalls and leaving these little snares and uh, creating these smoke screens and uh, putting up false road signs you know and changing the points these people are been at this for a long time and when you're when you're pure in heart and you're just trusting in God, you don't you, you have to come across this battlefield, this enemy ground of all the pitfalls, all the the fake models of Christianity. And the Lord will guide you by his word in what is what. The church is simply um those who are separate, those who the church is you, you are the church. If you've if you've received the Lord Jesus Christ, you're the church, and you don't you've got the the main bishop indwelling in you in your life. He's got your hand, and he will guide you in all matters of doctrine, because he raises up all the servants in that body, and they either serve him, the head, or they don't. And once you know the head, you'll know who who are those that are of him and who are those who are not of him by what by their fruits, by their they've either got his heart and spirit and light and fruit within them or they have not. And that's why you need the holy word, because it will sharpen it will sharpen you by the Holy Spirit. So I hope that's been um, a guidance to somebody, you know. And I'm going to leave there wishing people well and uh, an invitation to uh, examine, examine all the things that you may be critical or, or, or disagree with and to examine and it and if you um, haven't learned these things I would invite you to, to not trust what I say but to trust the living God and for his hand to lead you and to 
examine history carefully, examine the truth, because there's only um, a small amount of faithful historians, you know, and they're, they're in any area like world his uh, world history, you only get a, a few known r records of historians, and each and there'll be camps of people and intellectual debate on which one's right and but it's up to you to all with all the available information on any given area whether that's uh, church history roman history babylonian history world history world war Two. you know there's so many different historians that are around those events and it's up to you to go and examine the available correlated information and e even if you were a historian yourself, you would have to go and look for what evidence and other records have remained to go hand in hand to either correlate with that available evidence or to disprove that available evidence. But you need to examine the uh, areas of what has been left through history and study it and uh, because you'll get counter historians deliberately myth, um, putting out false information and if that's believed because it's popular that will stop somebody looking at all the other f for information and that false information will be passed on by that person because they would be teaching error and they would they would have trusted a scholar over you know one scholar over looking at all the many scholarly um, opinions but you need to be the scholar yourself alongside and take advantage of what those scholars have provided and then um, investigate it and measure it and uh, glean from it all the truth you can and the Lord will lead you into truth and it, it, it's quite a simple pattern the truth it's sort of like a straight line and it edifies it increases, it doesn't increase your ego, it increases your knowledge and it and it, it just fits perfectly. Whereas uh, and it stands the test of time. If it's not true, you'll be shaken from it. But if it is true, you'll never be shaken from it once you've received it, once you've established it. That will remain true, and you can build upon that truth. And that is a um, you know that's a principle of the Lord Jesus Christ that is preserved in his word so I'm going to leave there and wish people uh, all the best seeking answers and I pray this has been a blessing I pray the uh, any, any brother and sister learning about all the um, different, different different obstacles and pitfalls that the that they will be blessed and the Lord will increase their boldness in boldness and help them in the areas where they lack and they will take heart and uh, find find a reward in their in their studies and in their trust in their relationship with the Lord and uh, Maranatha to everybody and I pray the Lord come quickly and I pray that people would receive his word, his word be magnified and uh, received by this lost world that people will hear the truth and come to know the Lord for themselves and receive the witness that many have received for themselves that that witness can uh, be shared and continue to be shared in this these troubled times and I uh, leave that invitation and testimony in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen